everyone. Welcome, welcome to Beacons of Balance. I'm Arlene, this is Linda, and uh, we're so happy and grateful that you're joining us today. And for those that it's your first time, well, we're called Beacons of Balance, and it's all about living in this chaotic world of ours and trying to make sense of it and balancing it out, because we have our shadow side, our dark side, we have our light side, and it's about balancing that, and it's about our choices. So what we do is each month, so far, we've been coming up with themes for the month, and each week we'll talk about a different aspect of that theme. And this month, since it's the month, my favorite month of love, we're going to continue on about relationships. We started with um, family, then we went to friendships, and now we're talking about <clears throat> acquaintances. So an acquaintance is somebody you recognize by sight, all right? So it could be somebody um, that you know from like a business associate or or something, even from a grocery store or whatever. But it's not anybody that you know intimately that you're, you know, bosom right. buddies or close friendships. Somebody you know casually with limited interactions and shared experiences. This relationship is often superficial, and lacks emotional intimacy. And evidence shows that regular contact with acquaintances helps to promote mental well-being. That's interesting. That's huh? weird. Yeah. Difference between an acquaintance and a friend is the lack of emotional um, connection presence. So do you have just a load of acquaintances? Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Remember that old saying years ago, friend of the friendless? I think it's the way I, I grew up because... Well, I think I told you when I came in, when I was born, I was checking out. I almost died. I was on death's doorstep. So my mother got really freaked out and wouldn't let me go out almost to breathe the air. So she 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 kept me in almost remember that movie, The Bubble Boy, The Bubble. Yeah, I was kind of like the bubble girl. <laughs> I couldn't go out and I didn't have, you know, didn't have kids to play with. Never. I never roller skated. I never ice skated. I never, I didn't ride a bike. I mean, it wasn't until I was like maybe seven years old that I rode a bike. It was very weird. I mean, I would see my cousins. That would be about, that was the only friends that I kind of had. And my sister was almost seven years older than me. So she didn't want me. I was a pain in her butt. She didn't want to be bothered. Yeah. So I think I craved, I craved people. And I think that's why friends to me are very valuable. I, I look at it that way you know right. so we'll go on further about you want to read the second one acquaintances help a person to learn to adopt to different personalities social situations that's enhancing <laughs> it's enhanced i can't read it I yeah know, adaptability right. skills yeah why are acquaintances why are acquaintances needed on you a sense of belonging provide bursts of positive energy motivate us to engage in activities to expose and expose oh, expose us to, to new information opportunities. So that could even be being in a school, working where you work, you have a lot of acquaintances. Yeah, acquaintances are good. I mean, and I think what happens is a lot of times, you know, acquaintances could cultivate into a friendship. So going back to where you said, do I have a lot of I have a lot of acquaintances? Right. Well, and also you worked at that angel shop. So you met a lot. Oh my of, God. I had a lot. And of, a lot of it was superficial. It wasn't, you know, these were acquaintances. I remember this is funny and it formed into a friendship, although we haven't seen each other. I went to um, Mexico to see a friend, friends that were living out there. This was, God, I think it's three, going to be three years now, maybe. On the flight back from Mexico to New York, I was, I always get aisle seat. So there was a woman sitting next to me and then a guy and the snacks came around. I didn't have. So I said, so I said to her, I said, oh, here, you could give this to your husband. We should never assume. I always like, you know, man, I'm learning that. I still learn that. She goes, oh no, that's not my husband. And I said, oh, okay. It wasn't even her boy. You know, she was just sitting. She just happened to be sitting in the middle seat. Of course, you know, I laugh. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm an idiot. You know, da, da. and then we started, we started conversing. Well, we talked the whole way from Mexico to New York. I don't know how long the flight was. Do you know we're still friends? Isn't that something? We exchanged phone numbers and her name is Linda also. I have another Linda. I have a lot of Lindas in my life. Right, right. But um, we still talk and we we haven't gotten together since then. That's like my Sedona, my events I have. I've met some fantastic people that are, that I'm, they're married couples and I'm I, I like an acquaintance, but it's good to know them. 
I always feel it's good to know people that are living in other areas too, because if you travel, you get to stop, you see them or whatever, you know? Right, right. Do you find it easier to, because you, you're engaging, you're an engaging individual. Yeah. And my gift is being able to look like I'm involved and I care, but I'm not thinking anything. <laughs> it's a- just blank face, yeah. But what did that person just say to you? Oh, I don't know. I just <laughs> no. I like people's stories. I like to hear people's stories. Everybody has such cool stories, especially in the realm of what I deal with, with the connected to universal consciousness. I love to hear people's stories of how they were introduced. Well, it's funny with having my um store. I bump into people now, and you know, I am I've always been horrible with the names. You me can tell too. me a name, and I one minute later it's gone. I didn't even learn your name till last week. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm not. Um, uh, I, the face I'll remember. It's the name I forget. I always remember, and person don't shake like around their eyes. I can remember that. But you know what? The funny thing is, I can remember the stories. Yeah, I'll bump into somebody and they say, "Oh, and you went. You were here at this time, and this happened." And, and they look at me. They're like, "You remember? I that? remember. Yeah. I remember what." what was around them what happened but i can't remember a name i remember one time this was with my ex we were at a home depot and we went off our separate ways so i bump into a cousin you know it's a cousin's kid you know what i mean we were like probably fourth cousins so it was him his wife and his daughter i'm talking to them i'm not addressing them by their name because they saw me so we knew who we were Hi, how you doing? How's this? You know, how's, you know, and I knew his mother. How's Nancy? You know, she's my cousin. And uh, I couldn't remember his name or the wife, nor the wife, nor the daughter. My ex, now ex, came up, came up behind me. So this is what I did. I saw him. Because, <laughs> you know, when somebody comes up, you go, oh, hi, this is my husband. Because they didn't know my husband, you know. So I did this. I turned my back. I kept turning my back. So he was behind. I ignored him. <laughs> they kind of looked funny at first, you know, but then we finished our conversation. They like, he was so mad. He goes, why didn't you? I go, Did you tell I him you couldn't? He said, I didn't know their name. What was I going to say? Oh, this is, and what's your name, by the way? I forgot it. I mean, I'll just say it. I'll say, I'm so sorry. I'm great with faces, but I forget names. Or I've let people that I'm standing with, and hi, I'm Margaret. Hi, I'm, and then they'll say, hi, I'm, this is, yeah. Yeah, I did prayers, you know, the prayers. Well, I did prayers, but then when I, I would have each week, I had a uh, angel circle. So we all, you know, it was round circle. And then at the end, um, we do healing. I'd have the whole room. So we, I used to like have a chair and then a person would go on the chair and we'd we send energy to him, the whole room, the whole circle. And we, you know, so I would name him by name because I had this prayer, I would say. And then it got to be so many people. I put like three cheers across, you know, and I would name them by name. And, you know, I forgot their names. I had to, oh, it was awful. I had it in my head. I would have to go, okay, this is so-and-so. This is so, is this Mary? This is, you know. Wow, well, at least you were able to recall. Well, or sometimes I didn't. I'd say, I'm, I, I looked like a fool because they already thought, here you are an acquaintance, a better acquaintance. I come every week to see you and you can't remember my name. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty sad, but um, it happens. So do you have a lot of acquaintances? Oh God, yes, girl. I got 60, nearly 67 YouTube subscribers. Yeah, but you don't know all of them, right? Come on, oh God, no. Yeah, but I'm talking about just, you know, that's what one thing, you know, because I, we moved here to this house is going on three years and where I lived before we were on a main um, state highway road, you know, the house was on main, you know, so cars did it, but I knew my neighbors, you know, and you'd, and we moved here and this is a cul-de-sac. Wow. And I thought, oh, wow. So there's only so many houses, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like step. I, it's like Stepford wives. Everybody keeps to themselves. Nobody, inter- nobody, I mean, there's people, I don't know who they are. I never met them. It's not like it used to be back when when I was younger. People, neighbors tend to be on their own. It's like, I don't like that because in case of emergency or something, you know, right. I mean, I was always there for my neighbors and they were there for me if something happened. My old house that I had when my kids were young, this was really, I was on my second marriage in that house, but um, 
I was down in the basement. I had exercise equipment, my bike and a rowing machine. Da, da, da. So I would go down there in the morning before I went to work and got cleaned up. And my you know, ex, you know, now ex, he went to work. He came down, said goodbye. And he left. And I came. So it was a basement. He came up the stairs. And then there was a door that went into the kitchen, right, into the house. And then there was a think it was a, another door. It wasn't a hatchway to get into the basement. So there was an actual another outside door to go into the basement part. So I come up after exercising. I was in my pajamas. Okay. He locked me out of the house. He left for work and I was locked out. So now I'm like, oh my God, what am I? This is before cell phones or anything. So I had no, yeah, I had so nothing. And I'm in my pajamas and I'm going, oh my God. I'm like, I'm going to be stuck here. I have to leave, you know? Oh dear God. So I got out of the house. And everybody, you know, it was a younger neighborhood. People were working, but I went down a few houses. Were you barefoot? No, I think I had shoes on or something because I was exercising. So I went down a few houses and, you know, I knew there was this couple that was older. So he was, I guess, retired. I, the guy answered the door and here I am standing by my pajamas, no makeup, like, man. And I was, I said, oh my God. I said, I'm sorry. I got locked out of the house. And he just, he was laughing. He was I laughing. Said, Can you please take me. I had him drive me to my son's high school. And I went now, the guy didn't go in. I went in to the lobby. In your pajamas? In my pajamas. Talk about, okay. Talk about being bare. But what the hell? What are you going to do? So I went in. <laughs> and thank God, they got my son out of class and gave me the key. But I just thought about that the other day. But they were probably all giggling and laughing with you. They're probably saying, boy, this poor kid, we feel sorry for him. His mother's a real crackpot. <laughs> right. And then the guy drove you back and you were good. And then you'd give your husband a what for when he got home? Yeah, but they're, you know, at that point, they're like, ha, oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> That's when you kind of like have a key to, I don't even know if we could have a key open up that door. It was old. But so anyway, so that's, you know. So we went over all the different types of relationships, being family, uh, friends, and acquaintances. And the last one we have left is our romantic, which that episode um, is going to air next week, which will be the 28th. And we're excited about it because there's a guest speaker coming on, and her name is Dr. Terry Orbuck. She's written a few books, and she's been out there. She's been on TV and everything. She's pretty She's from, um, I think, the Michigan area, that area. But I'm excited to have her on. And she's going to be talking about, um, well, the topic will be romantic love. And I have to discuss with her what we're going to talk about. But if you you viewers want to write in questions to, you know, I could pose them to her, we'll pose them to her, um, leave it in our, your, the comment section. We do have a website, you know, Beacons of Balance, or even, I don't know, Lindy, you don't want it interfered with your channel because you get enough. No, because I'll never read it. Yeah, you'll never see it. <laughs> Okay, so the last episode, like I said, is on February 28th, which is next week. We have the guest speaker, so please tune in. It's going to be fun. Um, the topic that's remaining is romantic relationships. And these are things to think about, to contemplate, it, to maybe percolate, asking a question to send in. It said, uh, you can work through anything as long as you are not destroying yourself or each other. That means emotionally, physically, financially, or spiritually. You know, there is an art to... Because let's face it, anytime you're in a relationship, there's an art to arguing and everything. Oh, yeah. But a lot of times I've been there, especially like you say, the old days, you know, I could yeah. I could slice dicey, especially my male relationship. You know, I'd be like up one side, down the other and in between and back and forth. And that's horrible because that rips a person. I know. I would go for the, the soul, the heart. Yeah. It's it, totally it, it te inappropriate. Yeah. Te tears you apart. Um, never shame or mock each other for things you do that make you happy. You know, don't make fun of another person because it may be nothing that you interest you, but you know, it's their thing, you know, yeah. this is a good one. Write down why you fell in love with the person and read it every year or on your anniversary or more often. I know it's going to sound hokey, but <laughs> we do, we renew our vows every year, my husband and I, Aww. we, we wrote down I and mean, we have what we wrote down to each other, you know? And uh, oh my God, he wrote, he, he really writes beautiful things and it was beautiful. Write love letters to each other often, put each other first, um, grow together, make daily tasks fun, appreciate the other, trust love, be proud of the person, have nothing to hide, pamper and adore each other, 
disagree with respect of each other's feelings, be open to change and accepting differences, and remember to play and laugh. That's, that, that's important. Remember to play. I think that's important for all of us. To I always tell couples I read, you guys have date night? You always make sure you have a date night. Yeah, if you want to really keep a relationship, you know, going. And um, and sometimes you have to know when to walk. Because men won't speak up if they're feeling like left out, especially if children are involved. Yeah, yeah. And it does evolve in relationships. Like you said, it goes through different levels, especially, you know, the empty nest syndromes when kids go off to college or they get married or whatever. And then you're, you know, just there or an ill, say an illness takes place. Yeah. So many yeah, different, yeah. so many different things that happened, right? Right, right. So anyway, so it's that's exciting. And awesome, girlfriend. We're so happy you guys tuned in and you're here with us. And as always, Linda. Be the change you want to see. That's right. Be the change. Whatever you want to manifest, see it. And from our hearts to yours in total love, peace, um, balance. We love balance. you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Linda. Love you love all. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.